Hello, Guitar Smarts fans. Before you check out this podcast, I want to make you aware of a cool new place where you can interact with other Guitar Smarts listeners. It's a Facebook group called the Guitar Geek Hangout. That's where we hang out and talk about all things guitar. So if you like the Guitar Smarts podcast, come and chat with Kieran and myself over in the Guitar Geek Hangout on Facebook. Maybe check out some pre-podcast clips and even get involved in asking and answering lots of questions from the other page dwellers. Hope to see you there. There, there was one thing that um, I really, really got excited about and was like, this is going on my Christmas list. This is just going to be a really lovely self, self-indulgent self like um, purchase. So you know I'm a fan of, of the man in the top hat. And, of course. And, 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 and David Pitch, like... right? David Pitch <laughs> from Toto. Is that who you mean? <laughs> Seasons greetings. Welcome back to the Guitar Smarts Podcast. If you are an everyday gigging guitarist, then this is the podcast for you. Thanks for joining us for another podcast, the penultimate episode of the year 2022. Karen and I are reminded that it's about two years exactly since we started the Guitar Smarts Podcast, and we've enjoyed every minute of it so far, and we are ever grateful for each and every one of you that listens in each week. And this week we are talking about Christmas, and specifically about the things that we hope Santa will bring us remember last week's episode when Kieran let that black caught Z42 slip away at the end of the guitar show we visited well there's some news on that housekeeping remember to like and subscribe to this podcast on your preferred podcast app that way you'll get alerts when a new podcast is released and that means you won't miss the next show Use the link tree in the description of this show to get to our Buy Me A Coffee page. If you do feel generous, you can donate to the show there. And links to some of our Spotify playlists from previous episodes. Come and see us on the socials too, especially on the Guitar Geek Hangout page on Facebook where you can interact with Kieran and myself and many other guitar nerds just like us. And if you really want to support us, use the links to leave us a rating or a review. This is the best way to support us and helps us to grow. Merry Christmas to you. Have a wonderful holiday celebration wherever you may be. That's about enough from me. Let's get to it. Kieran. Hey. Ah, In the words of uh, Stained and Fred Durst, it's been a while. I love that track. Do you remember that? Didn't isn't that a Who song? No, no. You're thinking of. Um, oh, I'm thinking oh of you're else. thinking of something else. Oh, behind blue eyes. I'm That's thinking behind. it. You're thinking of behind blue eyes. That Fred Durst yeah. did yeah. about ten years ago. No, this that was when. Yeah. Do you remember when Fred Durst did a song with the band Stained called "It's Been yes. a While"? It must have been about year two thousand. Yeah. I love that track. I love Great it. Track. It was huge, wasn't it? It's been That's a while. What, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, and I went watching Stained, believe it or not, yeah. in Manchester at the Apollo in about yeah. in about the year two thousand one, two thousand two. You went to watch them? Yeah, I went to watch Stained, yeah. I was nice. I was quite into that kind of new metal really? thing at that time, I yeah. That must have just been a sea of black and purple <laughs> eyeliner, black hair and purple no, 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 eyeliner no. and no, Doc, no, Martin, no, no. Doc Martin boots and... No? I was into the music, the music, mm. not not the dress code. Right. You know, apparently, he accompanied it. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. I love that kind of turn of the millennium kind of um, you know, like pop punk stuff that was going on. Yeah, and, man. you know, Definitely. all that and, and all the new metal stuff as well. Yeah. And Biscuit yeah. and you know, yeah. uh, Linkin Park and all those yeah. guys. It was great. Yeah, Nickelback. I love it too, man. Nickelback, so, great. Mate, Nickelback got a lot of flack. They still yeah, do. No, they still I do. love. I love that first Nickelback album. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, superb. I don't know if it's I, I don't, well when I say the first Nickelback album, the, the, their kind of breakthrough album. I'm sure they had plenty of. Uh, um, it was the one with "You Remind Me" on it. What was the name yeah. of that album? Someone shouting it at us right now, going, "It's called this." Uh, what was that album called? But I listened to that. I used to have. Um, I used to have this commute at, back in that that time um, while I was studying, and mm. uh, we used to go between two different study sites, and uh, it was like a three hour drive between them, and that oh, was like wow. the, that was like but but through country lanes and and kind of oh, okay. so it wasn't like motorway driving, and that album literally was just like my on constant repeat for a period of my <laughs> life, and I, which I never told anyone because I would have like it wasn't it wasn't cool to like Nickelback. I don't think it is cool to like Nickelback now, but I I liked it. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
That was a really good album. I can't was... remember what the album was called either, but uh, it was so, a good album. Are they Canadian? Was that, was yes. that it? Were they like the, a, a nice, good, wholesome... They were nice, nice Canadian men. <laughs> yeah, nice Canadian men. I love nice Canadian men. <laughs> Who doesn't yeah. like a, me- a Mountie? <laughs> <laughs> We've gone rapidly off piste and down yeah, some absolutely. some weird some weird rabbit hole. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to figure out what that album was called. But it had some great great um, yeah. uh, great, great tracks on it. Hold on, we've got we've got get, silver got side silver side That's up. That's it, silver, silver side, side up. up. Yeah, man. That what was does a that great even album. mean? I, I don't even know. Isn't, isn't that that's like a roast beef reference, isn't it? If you're based in the east. <laughs> <laughs> No? Yeah, it could be. It could no, be, I doubt it. I, d- not I doubt for, not for the Canadians, no. <laughs> no, probably. I don't think they were thinking about a nice Sunday roast joint of silver side beef when uh, no. when they when they were thinking of an album name. That's, that's... <laughs> Sunday, brilliant. Oh, I'm hungry now. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, cool. how's you been? Anyway, we haven't had a chat for a couple of weeks. You've been well. Yeah, man. Missed your company for the last couple of weeks. You yeah. got more guitar. You got more guitars on the wall behind you there. No, I haven't. No, there's not more guitars. Oh. But I've got a different camera. I'm actually. Ah. So sometimes I use my uh, other camera, but this one's got a wider right. field of view because it's like one we demo at work. But ah, um, it has got a nice so field of view. I can see your entire room, and, and, mo- and more guitars have come Even into the field. It's only about three meters by three meters. It's, it kind of makes it look like a big room. But <laughs> yeah, so now now you can see the classical and the bass guitar. You got a bass there, yeah? No, it's, well, it's kind of it's just a Westfield kind of. Uh, uh, okay. It's meant to be a bit like a stingray type thing, you know. It's oh, got yeah, bit, okay. I can only see half of the body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like a... Um, oh, yeah, that's, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can yeah see but it it's it's all right. I only paid 50 quid for it off Gumtree, just so I Bargain. had the bass to do bass parts. I need um, to do recording that. Recording stuff. I need just, to get more proficient on the bass. I, I really, that, I'm i doing really lazy, like, at doing that. I need to do that. Yeah. Hey, I've just... I'm adding that. I'm adding that to the list for later on. <laughs> Why haven't I added that to the list? That's like a, one of my bucket list items to say. Uh, it's going on the list. Anyway, we'll yeah. get to the we'll get to the list in a minute. We will get to the list in a minute. Nice. Um, do you know what I'd actually quite like instead of that bass is a like a nice mm. little short scale bass because as a guitarist yeah. mm. to, to pick if you want to do a bass part to be able to pick up a, just a little short scale bass mm-hmm. you know that's got a, a scale length somewhere between bass and normal guitar that's really comfy I've played those mm. a few times before and mm. it's just such a nice little instrument to play you know yeah um, but anyway anyway so and no gigs or anything like that with us uh, yeah I had some gigs um, I've been doing a bit gigs a bit further a field recently um our lead singer is a good couple of hours drive from um where we normally gig on the south coast in the uk but he comes down like every time we have a gig it's a couple of hours drive there a couple of hours drive back so uh, periodically um we do some gigs up up nearer where he is just to take the, the pressure off of him um and yeah, so we've been doing a couple of gigs in his neck of the woods. Lovely people up in, yeah. up, near, up near Swindon. Really friendly, really hospitable. Lovely, lovely people uh, <laughs> that make that make the three hour, four hour round trip worth it. So yeah, and uh, and then I've got a gig tomorrow night, um, which is an army base. Uh, they're doing their Christmas do. So we are the the band for them for their Christmas do, which is going to be good. So. I've been warned already. They'll they'll be they'll be very very uh, uh, few women. It's it's a bit it's a bit of a sausage fest, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. So a, ger- a German party, <laughs> bratwurst fest. Yes. Yeah, the German parties are the worst. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's a keeper. That that's great. Uh, so yeah, so looking forward to, to doing that. But that one's up in Oxford somewhere tomorrow night. So again, it's a bit of a bit of a schlep. Wow. Um, so yeah, but and then I've got a couple. I think I've got about three more gigs left before before the end of the year. Um, and yeah, I'm going to finish from work on I think about like the 17th or something of December. Mm. And that's it. That's me done with gigs and work all the way through until like the first week of January. So, and then all the books have been opening up again for clubs and, and pubs and stuff like that. Weddings haven't dropped into the diaries yet, but we're, we're doing pretty well, actually. We've, we're, we're getting pretty full up with clubs and pubs and stuff for 2023. So wow. yeah, 
good good year. I mean, Superb. it's nice. It's it's a, it's a nice problem to have. We only do like two or three gigs a month, so mm. we're not a, we're not a, like we're weekend warriors, mate. That's what we are. That's it. That's the way it is. Got, that's the way it's got to yeah. be. Weekend saving warriors. It up. See if it's saving it up. <laughs> weekend warriors. Friday night. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, that's all good. How about you, buddy? Um, trying to think when the last time it was a couple of weeks ago. So we'd done the guitar show, hadn't we? Mm-hmm. Um, and we'd gone to see King King as well, mm-hmm. which was great. That was um, awesome. Yeah. Have you had it? You've been playing much in the last couple of weeks? Yeah. I mean, and do you know what? I've been playing a lot. I've not been gigging or anything okay. um, for for a while now. Probably won't until next year. Um, okay. But I'm really enjoying playing at home at the moment and doing some mm. recording and trying to write right. some stuff and um, doing some practicing and, you know, trying to get on top of certain things in my playing. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the things I'm behind on, though, is just general guitar maintenance. All my guitars. Oh. All my guitars are really due, you know, a good string change, a good clean, mm-hmm. you know, all those eight steps that we did way back at the beginning of the podcast. I need yeah. to do that for all of them, really. And in fact, nice. the Les, the Lester, the old Les Paul, which oh, yeah. those new pickups you got me, um, which I'm still massively grateful for, oh, they've just it, absolutely transformed that guitar. It's, those pickups are just so good. It's now the guitar I reach for all the time. Really? Just because of those pickups, yeah. Man, um, I, I'm so pleased to hear that. I can't wait until uh, be, I actually the way you've done it is nice hmm. um, because when I when I you know I'm a bit OCD so when I when I like say I'm going to overhaul a guitar and, and do it, it I do everything in one go mm-hmm. and that and and so I get the appreciation of like before and after but it's the sum of all those bits right so mm-hmm. the setup the fret dress the whatever yeah uh, new and 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 if I'm doing the electrics as well it'll be a full wiring change and new caps new pots as mm-hmm. well as new pickups and all of that and and it, and it's clear you can see the difference pre pre and post and you mm-hmm. go wow that was worth doing it's so so much better but actually i'm i'm i know you're planning on doing like the wiring harness and the pots and caps and stuff but you've done the pickups already so i'm really going to be interested to see what you think when you do the next incremental phase to see if you can spot a difference between okay if i just swap out the pickups with everything else being the same what what, you've said it's already made an improvement which is great and Mm. then what happens when you when you go to the next step and and do the next part of it. I'm, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I, nice I'm interested as well. I mean, I'm kind of almost expecting it to be like a a change in fidelity rather than anything else. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, are you mm. maybe just like going from HD to 4K, but actually, <laughs> in essence, everything's still the same, yeah. you know? So I, I, yeah. I'm almost kind of like... But the main thing is um, that, you know, the, the the electronics I've got in there at the moment is still pretty decent stuff, fairly premium, okay. but it's not, like, it's not like CTS pots and all that stuff. And the only thing really I don't like about them is the the feel of the pots is very free and loose that there's not really much resistance in the turn mm-hmm. i quite like it when there's a bit of resistance mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. you know um uh, <laughs> i just realized that's an electronics joke isn't it <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> No, I felt like it was a bit of resistance oh, in my yeah. potentiometer. I'm sorry yeah. about that. I just laughed at myself. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, there's another uh, one for you. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't think I've got any more. I don't want to. Let's not. Let's not impede this conversation. Uh, I, I have that one now. I have that one next. That's it. I very rarely have the same joke ready as you because yeah, you're too no. quick. But I have that one. I was going to say let's not impede. Let's not impede the progress of this podcast no, anymore. No, absolutely. No. no. Anyway, uh, anyway, yeah, before, anyway, before, anyway, anyway, yeah. anyway. So, so yeah, that's Come that's on. the main thing. <laughs> that's it. the main thing. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm I want to. I want to change. Is actually, I, I'm really happy with the sound as it is. Yeah. Um, it's Current, just currently. Little, yeah. Current. Absolutely. Really happy with currently. the sound as it is. I'm still oh, doing it. You- <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Stop it now. Sorry. sorry. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, enough. Yeah, so, no. you know, <laughs> enough. Let's switch enough. that off, okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm really happy with the sound as it is. It's just literally, I just wish that those those pots just had a bit more resistance <laughs> to the in terms of feel when you turn yeah. them. Yeah, 
yeah. you know that's that's the main thing because at the moment if i yeah. want to kind of i really love actually the the range of tones that that pickup has from you know low volume right mm. up to completely mm. fully open yeah. i didn't have that with the with the stock pickups at all you know i mean if i turn the front if i turn the net pickup right down on a on a pretty dirty sound it just goes like a strat it just goes really beautifully mm. stratty that same kind of um voweliness that you get yeah. from like a strat net pickup yeah. i get yeah. that on the les paul now more than yeah. i did before Sorry to interrupt this conversation. However, if you made it this far, you should definitely subscribe to the show on your favourite podcast app. Go and do that now, then come right back. Welcome back. The volume turned down. There's a beautiful range of tones that I didn't have through the volume range. So having that kind of finite control over the volume is really key to the way I feel like I want to play that guitar now. Nice. So with with, nice. The, with those volume <clears throat> volume pots moving very freely, it feels mm-hmm. a little bit more difficult to mm. adjust it than if there yeah. was a bit more kind of resistance there. So that's the main thing yeah. I want to change those for. But in terms cool. of sound, it's just I just love the sound of it. That that uh, bridge pickup is an absolute beast of a machine. But again, even though it's high output and it sounds mm. just like a rock machine roll mm. back the volume and it just tames it beautifully and it just great. it's just such a it's it's, it's a, easily a way more versatile guitar now just from that pickup change and um so we've talked about these and we're not we're not sponsored by them i, I no. really should we should be considering how often we mention <laughs> these but yeah um and, and look i'm a brand snob like like everybody else when it comes to it and but the this the pickups are the um, the Iron Gear pickups, right? Which I which I fit for a, lot, yeah. for a lot of people who t- who ask me what pickups I put in X Y Z guitar to give them the sound they want. And I always say to them, look, before you go, like if 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 you've got a particular pickup in mind that you've been really like hankering for, like you know you want um, I don't know. You want the vibe or, 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 you, or yeah. you want a bare knuckle, or you want a transition pickup because you want you know you got a, a Luke or something that mm. then fine, go for it, right? But I always say to people, give Iron Gear pickups a go because I've I've taken out a lot of cheap, like factory fitted pickups from guitars where you go, yeah, they, we can do better than this. And I've replaced them with, you know, Seymour Duncan stuff or or whatever, which are you know beautiful pickups bare knuckle stuff but i've also put in iron gear pickups into guitars in the same situation and and gone well this these are just as good as like at least to my ears and you know the quality of what i can see from the manufacturing and you know they, they sound comparable like yeah. honestly they're, they're they're that good I, I mean they're british designed i believe but then manufactured overseas china or somewhere they don't put a lot of you know emphasis on the packaging and stuff but yeah. they use good quality components and and do it do it right so mm. you know and they do do um replicas of or versions of more famous pickups um mm. like i've got i've got in one of my les pauls like the original like seymour duncan alnico 2 pro slash pickups yeah <clears throat> and i've got the iron gear version which they uh comedically call the tesla sharks which the middle kind of letters of Tesla and shark form the word slash for the oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah Tesla last few letters of Tesla and, and first few I letters. Got it. Okay, that, yeah, I didn't so, realize that. Right. But they've literally <laughs> copied the pickup identically in terms of its Alnico two. It's got the same type of windings. It's got the same type of output. They've even copied the same wooden spacer that sits within the pickup block itself that you don't mm. get in every pickup. But the Seymour Duncan Alnico two Pro slash ones have this wooden spacer inserted into the pickup and they've mm. so that's so a iron gear have done that as well in their one and i've got those in a in a, in a les paul as well and you a b them and you go yep that's 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 the, that's the that's, sound that's the sound right yeah. that is the sound so uh so in your guitar you've i remind me what i got you i think i bought you like the the classic like combination which is like a blues engine blues I think. engine and uh and dirty talk the, was it dirty talk that's it the dirty yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a pun for people that are listening it's talk t-o-r-q-u-e <laughs> dirty talk not like you know 
But anyway, yeah, yeah. So the blues yeah. engine in the neck pickup position and the dirty talk, yeah. and actually, mm. when on paper, you, I, when when you said them, I, I looked at the specs and I was like, these are meant to be apart. These are meant to be like paired together yeah. because the the blues yeah. engine's like I think about eight point or something k in terms yeah. of its resistance, its impedance. So yeah. that's relative. That's kind of what mid, not not low. I mean, probably relatively low for a, a humbucker. I think in terms of its um in terms of its output so you know you mm-hmm. can you associate the resistance of a of a of, of something by to to its output capability you know the higher resistance it has that means it's got more the more cable right that means yeah. you know, cuz it's the longer winding. it's, it's yeah, got yeah. it's got it's got a longer cable effectively more windings yeah. which means there's more cable to pick up uh, the mag- the movement of of the string around the coil mm-hmm. and therefore you get more signals so more more resistance equals more output but that 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 dirty torque is twice the resistance. So I was mm. like, that's twice mm. the output of the front. I don't know necessarily how that's going to mm. sound. Balance. Um, How's that going to balance tonally? Yeah, yeah. Balances beautifully. Absolutely yeah. beautifully. Yeah. Um, initially, I thought um, that it wouldn't because actually the first time I wired them up, I had a little bit of a grounding fault. I was yeah. actually grounding <clears throat> signal across the um, tone capacitor all the yeah. time, regardless of where yeah. the tone capacitor was. So it sounded like it was the tone was wound all the way down i just thought mm-hmm. this doesn't mm-hmm. sound quite right but oh mm-hmm. once i'd fixed that mm-hmm. just they just work so good together yeah i remember because you texted me didn't you and you installed yeah. them after having read the specs and you were like how are these going to match and then you put them in and you're like well they don't match at all this is this is yeah, not right exactly. I was like, and you were, you were texting me going is it supposed to sound i'm like no it's not there's definitely like a, a wiring thing yeah. going on there they shouldn't be that out of kilter and then you fixed it and you're like ah oh, it's it's, yeah. it's a revelation it's, i think it's, it's like scary. um i think it's like the same the same principle as um like the seymour duncan hot rodded humbucker set which, which they do which is right uh, according to seymour duncan it's like their most successful combination that they do of of, of a set mm-hmm. of pickups mm-hmm. And they're quite different. One, I think it's like the, is it a jazz in the, in the, in the uh, neck position and a Jeff Beck, I think in the bridge position, right? So they're completely from two completely different sets and they have like, they go back, like you've described, they've got totally different kind of like uh, specs on them. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's the same Alnico kind of type of magnet, but it may, it may even be different. I think one may be an Alnico two and one may be an Alnico four or something. So anyway, they don't look on paper like they should work together, but you know, according to Seymour Duncan, you put this in something Mm -hmm. like a Les Paul and um, you just get a huge spectrum of sounds and you get everything from the creamy, kind of neck bluesy stuff that you'd like all the way through to the searing rock leads but not in a way that jars or sounds really like in, yeah. inco- incoherent from, yeah. from the two you just get a broader spectrum which i think is quite a nice palette to have that's um, exactly how you just described it perfectly that's exactly how yeah. it feels it feels like the spectrum of tones available is widened you know the brightest mm, mm. tones that i could get are now brighter than that which yeah. is great and the and the darker tones are darker than they were but it's all absolutely under complete control like that's the great thing about it it's kind of like i feel like i've got more control over those those tones and yeah so yeah. i can't thank you enough man because it's not just a great oh, gift to, to have those pickups but like it, you you know it's kind of reignited um a love for that guitar and playing cool, it more often and i'm playing guitar more often generally now anyway because i'm enjoying plugging that guitar in yeah. and you know just getting more and more familiar with with how that those pickups respond and how it feels to play that guitar you know so that's that's been for I mean for like you know since since my birthday when you know, you very kindly got me those pickups. That's that's basically what I've been doing since then. Just oh, enjoying cool, playing that nice. guitar and writing with it, and trying to, you know, come up with some, you know, some stuff because I'm trying to write some backing tracks and things. Oh um, yeah, for the podcast and for our listeners as well, right? Exactly. Been, yeah. So this little secret secret project on the go. Yeah, trying to trying to write a kind of an album of about ten tracks for, um, you know, practicing guitar too. Some of them will be functional. Nice. Some of them will be just just fun. Just some of these things you can. Just just you know, play guitar over and come up with ideas, and some will be there specifically to try and target certain areas of theory or playing, and yeah. it's a bit of a project. And hopefully next year we can get that get that out. But um, yeah, cool, but that's man. what I've been up to. Nice, yeah, yeah. So we, we oh man, it sounds great. I love it when you guys when uh, you get into um, playing again, and uh, yeah, the maintenance thing. 
that you described. I mean, Christmas is the perfect time to do that, right? And we're going to get on yes. to, in, in a minute, some little little things on our Christmas wish list, right? Because this episode will come out just before, yeah. before Christmas. And uh, so, yeah, it's... Um, it's, that, it's getting to that towards that time of the year, and and um, I was speaking to to Damo the other day, <clears throat> and uh, he was like, "Oh, my guitars just need a bit of a, a going over." I was just like, "Get them round to me over Christmas," and that's just like the best time because mm. we'll all be having some downtime, and you can just sit and just get everything sorted, ready for the new year. So, yeah, yeah maybe there'll be some things on our list. Christmas. For sure. Well, that's the thing. So when this podcast comes out, it'll only be a couple of weeks or maybe just less yeah. before uh, before Santa Claus himself comes yeah. around to uh, to deliver many a, a wonderful gift to to us and <laughs> all the things we wish for. You know that uh, I'm sure you'll be getting that PRS Silver Sky delivered oh. that you so uh, that you loved and enjoyed so much. <laughs> Oh, we, did we talk about that last time? That's what we talked about last time. Yeah, it was your guitar safari fail. It was the. It was the. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it was, I, I, that yeah. was what you called the last episode, wasn't it? Guitar That's safari right. fail. Yeah, there was a man, there was a number of failures on that on that uh, on that episode. I felt one, bad for you. One, you felt bad for me. I did, yeah, because you know it should always be a good experience going to a guitar store, especially when you're trying out a guitar that you've revered for quite some time. Although I must yeah. say, uh, I had some interesting feedback on that episode from. Uh, good friend mr rory harvey oh uh, yeah who said he said exactly the same thing he said um i think i can't remember exactly what his message was but basically he agreed with you he, he had a same really? underwhelming experience when he tried a prs silver sky and he plays a couple of um john sir model yeah. guitars so obviously he knows yeah. a good guitar when he's playing one mm. and he knows a bad one too and surprisingly there's somebody who concurs with your experience man well you that know? means a lot say surprisingly because... i don't i'm not saying that people shouldn't concur with your experience but i'm saying no, no, it's surprising no, that that guitar yeah hasn't had well i mean it has fantastic reviews but why is it that you know? so i've reflected i've reflected well first of all thank you for for telling me that about rory because a it's nice to know when someone um has a similar mm. experience but b love the fact he's still listening to the show and i mean that's a that's a pro guitarist right who we have a yeah. huge amount of admiration for so he knows he knows his his stuff Right. So, yeah. um, so that, so that was the, that was the full fat PRS that I tried very briefly and, and mm. look, you know, full disclosure, I was, I was so, um, uh, pushed for time that day in the guitar store and there was, there was, a, a another guitar I wanted to try out more, believe it or not, mm -hmm. that, uh, after having picked up that silver sky two and a half grand's worth of it and and just having a quick noodle on it um, without plugging it in I realized that the setup was just so far off the mark and I was so disappointed overall just having it in my hands looking at the overall guitar in itself mm -hmm. which was pretty well put together um, but badly set up I just thought oh, this is this is disappointing so I didn't even go further with it but um what we, but I um I sent you did I send you a video did I you did send um, me a video yeah last you went weekend to, was it PMT yeah um, you went to PMT in Portsmouth um yeah. and you tried out the SE version um, yeah. the video was fantastic I got to say I thought it sounded great in the in the recording that you did but right. did you feel the same about the SE so yeah so I um I snuck myself off I I, I couldn't I was kind of I, like I felt bad, like having so uh, done such a cursory look at this PRS um, in uh, in in Guitar Village, and I we've talked about the setup and, and it not being right and it being a bit underwhelming. Um, that I I had a couple of hours free last weekend, and I thought right, I'll go down to PMT, which is literally just down the road here, ten fifteen minutes drive the other way towards Portsmouth. And um, they had they had a bunch of the Silver Sky SEs in mm -hmm. in 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 stock, and really nice guys down there, and um, they were very happy for me to try one of them out. I had no no kids that day, no responsibilities that day, I had a few hours to kill, and I was like, this is great, I'm going to go to a guitar shop. <laughs> So I did, and um, they they let me have one and uh, to play, and they had a really lovely um, room out the back, completely private, no nobody nobody there, and they just said, yeah, here you go, take the guitar, here's a nice amp, go for your life, try it out, and so I was in this room. Uh, by myself and I thought oh I'll just make a quick video for you and I didn't know where it was going to go so I just put the put the phone up there and press record and it, you literally saw my initial reactions holding the guitar playing it dicking around with a few sounds um 
the video is quite large. I don't know if I'll be able to put it on our social media, but if, if anyone wants to um, to see the video, then just like send a message to the podcast and I'll, and I'll yeah. send it to you and uh, via Dropbox or something. It's about 10 minutes long. You can, um, hear, you can really hear Kieran's classy blues licks. Uh, oh, no, fantastic no, no. playing. No, too. well, you're, <laughs> you're too kind. Playing, it was, it was in, incredibly cliched and and <laughs> and repetitive, but I was just, it, li- wasn't. It, it, it wasn't about the playing. It was just trying, I was just trying to yeah. give the guitar a fair chance, right? And, yeah. and, and see what I thought of it and try a few things out. So, um, I was underwhelmed by the SE as well, if I'm honest. And, and, and on the video, I talk about the reasons why. I do understand why people like them so much. Um, okay. They're they're a nice guitar um, overall. I mean, the Indonesian made one, and we love guitars made in Indonesia and and the Far East and what's coming out of, of, of you know court factories and all of that. So no snobbery against where it was made at all. I, mm-hmm. You know, I've got a blooming hundred and eighty pound Harley Benton on the wall behind me, amongst other things, which with a with a decent setup, which it's had, mm-hmm. it's a monster guitar, and it was like that's made in Indonesia, and I love it. Mm. So, but again, for eight hundred pounds, this PRSE was overpriced. Um, lovely tone, nice mm-hmm. pickups in it, but some of the fit and finish on on the guitar wasn't as good as it should be. The setup was not bad. Much, interestingly, the setup off, off out of the box was better than this two and a half grand one. Um, so that that's interesting. It still needed a, a, more of a setup, but it was an acceptable setup. But it, I then on the video A beat it with um, a Fender Mexican strap, and uh, yeah, let's. <laughs> and I thought that sounded a bit sweeter. Actually, I thought that sounded mm. a little bit nicer. You sounded like you had a yeah, fuller range of tones on that guitar. Well, it, yeah, it was a better well, guitar. Surprising. It was a better made. It was a better made guitar. Yeah, less less quality issues on it, mm. and um, uh, just overall a nicer nicer guitar that I would I would enjoy playing more and owning more. And it was 150 quid cheaper than the SE. But but where I netted out, mate, was I think I think the PRS Silver Sky SE is a great guitar. Mm-hmm. I think the I think the full fat one is overpriced for what it is for basically a bolt on strap mm-hmm. copy, right? Mm-hmm. You're paying for the John Mayer name. Apart from the machine heads being a little bit swankier and the finishes being a little bit nicer, yeah. the the SE holds itself very nicely in comparison to the full fat version. So you might as well go for the SE one if you really want one. Um, it's a shame they don't do it in the in the huge amount of colours, but it's a good guitar. Um, and what else would I say? Yeah, it, it, do you know why I was disappointed? I, I've kind of figured cool. it out. It's like you hear about this fabled PRS, like quality control and, and all mm. of that. It was clearly on two of these guitars lacking, right? Mm. Mm. And that's that was two out of two for me, where it needed a major setup overhaul um, or the fit and finish and just overall attention to detail on the SE wasn't as good as I thought it should be for A, having PRS on the headstock and B, it being two hundred pounds more than an equivalent Mexican um, classic player strap, mm-hmm. so it just kind of reminded me that you know these are good guitars, but there's a point, a price point of diminishing returns, which I don't think you're really yeah. getting anything more on between the SE and the full fat American version for what is effectively a bolt on strat copy, right? You're not getting your PRS exotic tone woods and library kind of quilt tops and all of that nonsense for the three grand. Um, and also guitars are all individual, right? And, yes. and that SE had a bit of, bit of stuff on it that would have made me go, I, I want to see a different model. Cause this one's got, got some dodgy bits on it that I'd like to check out another one and see if, if it's any better. Um, so try them out, see what you think, but yeah. Well, well, I think, you know, that's, it's really interesting conclusion that you've come to. It's a shame actually. It's a shame because do you know what? I love PRS's guitars, but, um, I never really understood the silver sky really as a PRS endeavor. It was always meant to, it was always, I always feel like, you know, John May didn't get what he wanted from Fender. So he went to PRS instead and PRS yeah. were like, well, of course we're going to help you, John Mayer. It's just a shame that you don't like our actual guitar. Well, he does obviously he had the, those, you know, those modern Eagles and things like that, which are immense creations. 10 grand, you know. 10 grand's worth. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. 10, 20,000 you know. pounds if you wanted one of those yeah. modern, modern Eagle 
Yeah. But but like yeah. I said, effectively, like I said last week, you know, I, effectively what Paul Reed Smith is doing, he's just building a version of the strap for John Mayer to the specs mm. John Mayer wants mm. with some innovations, but mm. it's still it's still just a strap. You know, where I, where it's at for me with PRS is in the PRS standard model guitars. Mm-hmm. You know, that's mm-hmm. where the that's where I think, and I'm sure you would find. Um, you know the the reason for buying a PRS is with those guitars. You know, um, yeah. the, the yeah. custom twenty twos and twenty fours, and and you know the McCarthy models and the five nine fours. The five mm. nine four five nine four was the bus I used to get to school. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Five nine three it might have been. Five nine four I mean uh, anyway. <laughs> Shall we move on? Let's move let's, on. Let's do a let's do a let's finish off with the main reason for doing this podcast today. Oh yeah. Um so Christmas is coming, just a couple of weeks away, if you're yeah. listening, you know, listening to this as it's just as the podcast has just come out. And yeah. uh, Kieran and I were just we were discussing that we what we should do is come up with a list of things, uh just a, a handful of things, each of us, that maybe we or any other guitarist would love as a stocking filler from uh, yeah yeah from a good old mr claus as he comes swinging past um on christmas eve <laughs> ideas for yeah, for, for your exactly. wish list that you may want to put on whatever your... it could be it could be something yeah. big something small something you need something you want something you hope for whatever it is let's uh get into the christmas spirit of things and uh yeah. and make some recommendations now um i'd like to go first if you don't mind kieran i'd like you to go first <laughs> Because I'm still compiling my list in real time. Well, well do you know what? My, my, my first suggestion is um, actually in a reciprocation. Um, right. Thanks to 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 another business online called Truefire. Have you heard of Truefire? I certainly have. Yeah. I so certainly have. Truefire, a fantastic online. Uh, we don't, we're not sponsored by them in any way, but they're a fantastic online um, resource for uh, learning material and they have yeah. a lot of very very famous and very excellent guitarists create content for them um for learning guitar i mean they've even got people like pat martino doing jazz studies he's one of the greatest jazz guitarists of all time i mean he's dead he's this and he's still on there teaching but um <laughs> that's, that's how good true fire is <laughs> that's um, impressive so they've had a lot of people on there uh, doing fantastic courses. But more recently, True Fire did a blog, um, uh, which my dad um, let us know about because he found it online. But he, they did a True Fire did a blog of the twenty five best podcasts mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. listen to for guitarists in twenty twenty two, and we were number nine on the list, which is incredibly Yay! cool. Guitar Smarts was number nine on True Fire's list of podcasts. We didn't know they were doing this. We, we didn't, didn't know. know. We, we, we had nothing to do with this. They scoured the internet and. Yeah. Yeah. And had a listen and people's opinions and yeah. yeah, they said the Guitar Smarts podcast, one to listen to. That's right. So so I you know, so so my first recommendation for something to um maybe get for Christmas for yourself yeah. is a true fire membership. Yeah. And and uh, there's uh, there's some there's some people actually I will say on YouTube who are sponsored by um, True Fire who you can use some discount codes for to get a cheaper membership. So people like John cool. Cordy, if you go to his YouTube account, you can get a code from his YouTube account and get forty percent off their membership, which is really good, or forty percent off their products. Um, True Fire allow you to buy some stuff, so you can there's a particular course or book or study like you want to learn some of Greg Cox licks or whatever or uh, yeah. or something by you know whoever um just somebody in particular you want to learn from you can buy their stuff directly or you can mm-hmm. pay for like a premium membership which i think is about 200 pound a year mm-hmm. um but then you've got access to everything all the time and and yeah so that's my first suggestion for a christmas gift is get yourself a year subscription to uh the true fire i think that's a great shout mate and actually i had that i had that on my list as well um oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> Not well, no, no, no. But there are some great, there are some great ones as well. Fender do a, a, a great online course. Yeah. There's, there's pl- you know, plenty of these YouTube vloggers that are doing good online courses as well. You know, um, yeah. I just, I, I've, I've never been more tempted than I am now. I don't know, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I've always just kind of tried to push 
and we we've we've talked about like how to learn a song in the best way and all of that on the podcast before but i just think now there's such a great access to all of this online stuff that we didn't have when we were coming up and now my kids are learning guitar as well and they have guitar lessons every week which is which is brilliant i don't think you can substitute for that mm-hmm. and they've got a fantastic guitar well they've got they've got matt lake um, there you are. a friend of the show as their guitar teacher. So, you know, ha- and they're really getting into it. And it's kind of made me think, yeah, I'm going to speak to Matt as well about um, what online stuff they could be doing, um, like in between lessons with him just to keep them, you know, keep them going mm-hmm. during during the during the weekday. And, and then it also kind of made me think, well, why, why don't I do some of it as well? And just, you know, I'm forever like watching YouTube videos of stuff and going, okay, uh, you know, I'm going to steal that link lick or, or borrow that but what if i actually just properly invested some time into you know trying to get from a to b with some proper proper online lessons and give it and give it a go so i think it's a great shout i think it's a great shout cool man thank you right next what about you what, what, what's that give us a suggestion so well my, my first my first suggestion and and i'd welcome some input from from the guitar smarts listening audience because this is an area where i am not an expert and and it's um, it is around getting a bass guitar, oh. right? Yeah, that is on my wish list actually mm. because I've got all these blooming guitars behind me, and not one of them is a bass. And it's silly, really, because there's so much I can transpose in terms of what I know on a guitar to to a bass. Yeah, I know. I mean, I I would um, I would fall short of possibly enraging the bass listeners of this podcast by saying. Bass is easy. It's just the it's just a guitar. It's definitely not. Obviously, it's way not. Definitely it's a completely, not. completely different yeah. beast. Completely yeah. different beast. Um, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've got a really cheap kind of um, bass guitar that I got just mm-hmm. so that I had something to do. You know, the, what the the kind of job of the bass guitar. I do wish I had yeah. something better, something more comfortable yeah. to play, something that sounded a little bit more um, versatile. I can't really seem to yeah. get any sounds out of it other than one specific thing but i actually completely agree with you you know but you know any bassist listeners that we have or people that are you know both guitarists and bassists you know Mm -hmm. rory harvey looking at you Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. what would you recommend for someone like kieran who's never owned a bass uh, Mm -hmm. and would like to own a bass and enjoy maybe you know playing the bass parts to some you know to some songs and and learning a bit more about playing the bass what would you recommend yeah that's a great idea i'd love that that'd be great to just get into and and because there's already that access through what I know on a guitar, mm. I would feel that, you know, I, my gut is telling me it would just be something that I would be able to access a little yeah. bit more readily without some of the initial frustration and then build on that platform. Obviously, you know, as you've rightly said, you know, and I'm fortunate enough to play with some incredible bla- bass players where you just go, wow, that what you're doing is just like in- incredible. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'm, not, I'm not even being a, it, thinking that I'm going to get to a stage where I can, where I can play like that, but just to, just to be able to do, do more than, you know, a basic walking bass line and, and, and just hanging over the, the root and chord changes would be, would would be would be would be nice just to take it to that yeah. next level. I know. It reminds yeah. me of that old joke that uh, that kid gets a bass guitar for Christmas yeah. and he goes for his first bass lesson and he comes home after an hour and um and his dad goes, "Oh, what did you learn?" And he said, oh, "I just learned yeah. how to play the E string over and over, just do 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 do." And he goes to his next next bass lesson and his dad just yeah. comes back and dad goes, "Hey, what did you learn this week?" He said, oh, "I just learned how to play the A string just over and over, just do 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 do." Oh, okay. Goes to his next next bass lesson comes back after an hour what did you learn this week son like, i just i just learned to play d over and over and over just d d d d d d yeah it's brilliant um and then next week he goes through his fourth guitar lesson and then but he doesn't come home he's, his dad's like where is he and he's like in the middle of the night when he comes home he's like where have you no, been son and he's like oh sorry i had a gig with acdc yeah there you go. that's it done that's all you there need go. that's all you need so i'm i'm fortunate enough to play occasionally with the with the with the dlb but there's a bass player He's a, he's a friend and, and uh, uh, inspiration. A guy called Dave Bartlett. I just, you just watch him play bass, and it's just it's just beautiful. I mean, he's an incredible guitarist in his own in his own right. He plays guitar better than I do, anyway. But um, yeah, just to see him on bass, you just go, "Damn, I want to." <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's, it's it's rare. It's not. That's a lie. It's, I was going to say it's rare that I get so inspired by bass players. 
Mm. That's complete lie because you know Victor Wooten, Nathan East, the list. You know, yeah. It goes, yeah, it goes on and on. And there's there's bass players that I just go, wow, that's that's incredible. But um, I guess more frequently I get inspired by watching guitar players, right? Because that's where I can try yeah. to em- emulate something that they're doing. Um, mm. But yeah, I'd like to do that. So yeah, that's my that's my that's my thing. And I'm hearing good things about these sire um, mm. basses. Uh, you know, apparently they've got a good reputation. Is that where I should start? A couple of hundred quid, get one of the entry level sire bass guitars. That's a good question. Don't Some, know. Tell me. That's a very Someone good question. Me. Somebody who's listening, please answer. Somebody tell me where to start. <laughs> Somebody tell us where do we start yeah. with bass guitars? Where do, I, where do I start? Where do I start? Have you? Yeah. All right. Cool. So that's that's the first thing on my list. Get get a bass. Learn a new instrument. That's, that's, that's a what great I'd like idea. To do. So yeah, it's a good yeah. idea. Not just in terms of the present, but it's like oh. learning a new instrument anyway is a great thing to do mm. Um, mm. for your mind, mental health, and all that. Um, yeah. Next one for me, super simple. This is something that oh. probably won't surprise anyone but you can always pick this up for 50 quid or so if you want an extra pedal for your board get the tc electronic spark mini boost can't go wrong with it it's such a great little um cheap little boost sounds fantastic i've always Mm -hmm. loved it because it's great value because Mm -hmm. you've got so much gain available um Mm -hmm. but also you've got that great momentary feature which i just i don't understand why nobody else seems to do that with their boost pedals you know you can either click it on or click it off like you normally do or you can Mm. lean on it and hold it down and then when you take your foot off it will turn off which is a really cool little feature for just like punctuating parts of riffs or i want one of those yeah you should get one man i mean they're like they're always on sale they're always on sale i'm I'm adding that to my list so (laughs) so uh in a de- in a desperate attempt to not get another pair of socks, that I'm being really mean. Um, but uh, I get great presents from my wife and family. I, I, I do. I genuinely do. But yeah, me too. Uh, but Amazon has got this thing, right? Have you seen it where you can add a wish list um, yeah. of stuff, right? But then you can share your wish list with with whoever you like. Right? That's right. So yeah. it's like it doesn't get much more subtle than that. Saying uh, here's my list. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but. But I, I just add stuff on there periodically that I see. Uh, yeah. So in, in, inspired by something, a video that you sent me, and so you're you're feeding my gas on a on a, on a much appreciated basis. Uh, but you sent me um, the link to a review on the Boss DS One. Yes. Uh, distortion pedal, <laughs> yeah. and in my never ending quest to just get more more pedals, right? Good, because there's there's <laughs> hold on one two three four five six seven. Eight. There's there's ten ten pedals sitting over there on the cabinet uh, that aren't on my board, <laughs> which I've bought and just kind of gone. Yeah, they're great. I love them. I've used them occasionally. So, you know, in a you quest, need, you to, need to add more to that, don't you? I need to add more to that to that yeah. list of pedals just gathering dust. You know that that aren't on my board <laughs> at the moment because I keep talking about with you that I'll build another board for like jam nights and yeah. like depth gigs and all of that. So. But yeah, why do I not own a Boss DS One, man? That's like that's sacrilege yeah. to not yeah. to not own one of those. Yeah. Um, so that's on my list. That's one thing that I want for Christmas. Uh, they do a Wazacraft one as well, which is a bit more money. But no, just the standard one will do. And and now I'm adding on to it the uh, TC Mini Boost for sure. I need one of those. Like, yeah. Just that moment, that momentary function. I just need that in my life. It's it's essential. You got why, do I, why do I not have yeah, that? I, I think you'd love it. I think you'd love it. And I, and, I, and it's a, you know, for using the uh, overly used terms that us guitarists tend to use, it's a very transparent boost as well. Obviously, yeah, being a, exactly. being just a clean boost, it's, there's no tone yeah. controls. There's literally just a gain control. You've got room for mm-hmm. it on your board. Everyone's mm. got room for it. It's a, it's a mm. mini pedal. You know, it just needs one nine volt and it's one knob. You can, you know, you can control the knob with your foot if you want. You know, it's so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get it. You've got to get it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. All right. So it's going on the list. I'm adding it now. I'm adding it now. <laughs> so that's my number two. What about yourself? What 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 else are you uh, what else are you recommending <laughs> people ask Santa for this year? Uh, okay. So well, um, there there was one thing that um, I really really got excited about. And was like, this is going on my Christmas list. This is just going to be a really lovely self self indulgent like um, purchase. So 
you know I'm a fan of of the man in the top hat. And, of and, course. And, 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 and David like... Petch, right? David Petch <laughs> from Toto. Is that who you mean? <laughs> I'm a massive fan of him too. Yeah. Uh, oh, you mean Ebenezer Scrooge? It, in... I'm a massive fan of him too as I get yeah, older. Yeah, that's yeah true. definitely. Yeah. Can, I, can I have this for Christmas, Daddy? <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 yeah, the ghost to the ghost of Christmas future will come and haunt. Me. That's right. Yeah. Um, no. Right. Slash. Ob- sorry. Obviously. Slash. Obvious, of course. Oh, obviously, sorry, sorry. Obviously. So, what does every slash fan need it, other, other than one of his like you know ridiculously overpriced um, you know refinished Gibson Les Paul standards, but with a with, a, with his squiggle on the headstock and and uh, and, a, and a, an overinflated price tag. Um, with now, you know, not even his Seymour Duncan pickups in it, but Gibson's version of it. I won't That's, go there any, any sounds, further. Sounds Sorry. great. Yeah. <laughs> Take my money. No, 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 no. Let's, 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 well, we, we've got done a whole episode on that and the time I nearly bought a slash custom Victoria gold top and then decided that Tokai was the way forward and yeah. ended up getting two Tokais and, and <laughs> enjoying them much more than, than, yeah. the, than, the, than, the, than the Gibson version. Anyway. Gibson have released a book called Slash The Collection. <clears throat> Ooh. A premium coffee table book. This is this is like right up my 40-year-old okay. middle-aged man Christmas present. Yeah. Right, well, after the kids have gone to bed, glass of brandy in the in the lounge, fire trickling away there in the corner. Hi fi on. You got the record. Yeah, I was gonna say you got the record yeah. player on. Oh, you? record player yeah. playing some lovely music there. Yeah. And this beautiful, beautiful hardback book in my Tom. in my hand. And this tome little glass, this tome, <laughs> this this book of wisdom, right? And for someone like me, right, I I had I had, and I lent it to somebody, bastard. Uh, it's probably a good friend, so not a bastard, but um, I had like, <laughs> sorry, I had a an old copy of Guitarist uh, magazine, yeah. um, which which was like all of Slash's guitars and all these photos of a huge guitar collection from like the 90s. And I lent that magazine to someone and um, haven't had it since. So if anyone has a copy of that they want to give to me for Christmas, it'll be great, greatly appreciated. But Gibson have got a book out now. Premium coffee table book explores the unprecedented detail, the instruments uh, of the global brand ambassador that is Slash rock legend. And it's just, it's just this, it's, it's like, it's just, just be- it's just a beautiful book, right? With all these glossy photographs, 364 pages, lavishly illustrated with photos of Slash and his impressive guitar collection, shot by the Gibson team uh, and legendary rock photographer Ross Halfin, um, who's ha- got this relationship with Slash extending back to 1986. Written and edited by Gibson editor in chief Chris Vinicom. Right, it's basically my, I, my right. It's it's yeah. it's it's the it's the book I need in my life, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would very much like to add that. Um, they do two versions. They do a custom edition and a deluxe edition. Wow. Right? Okay. Uh, so the custom edition uh, from Gibson comes in a clam a clamshell box. That sounds like a like a girl I used to know. Comes in a clamshell box with premium case candy, uh, an Axe Heaven Appetite Les Paul miniature. Oh, you know those little little miniature guitars they used to do anyway. Uh, a slash bandana, a pick tin uh, with some picks, a cover post. Poster, some guitar prints, and you get a certificate of authenticity. I don't know why. Why are you getting a certificate of authenticity with this book? I'll tell you why, uh, dear listener. Uh, oh, hold on. The book is is signed by Slash. This is why, and it's limited. Why not? Why not, Gibson? Why not? It's limited to five hundred copies. Right. <laughs> Uh, would you like to know how much I can get this book for? How much can you get that book for? Well, a steal, a steal for a book, actually. And, really? and with those additional bits of case candy, you know, some guitar picks, and it's been signed by Slash. Um, so that's pretty special, right? So that's that's only going to cost me nine hundred and ninety nine dollars for that for that book. A grand. <laughs> For a coffee table book. <laughs> hold on, hold on, though. Hold on. I can see the look on your face says everything. I'm, I'm, I'm enraging you. Hold on, no, no. What's, but, it, but, what's, what's it written on? <laughs> <laughs> 
papyrus <laughs> excavated from the tombs in <laughs> Egypt has been God. lovingly uh, re upscaled. Is the it's, it's skin <laughs> extracted from children of the. Uh, what is it's, made of slash, it's made of Slash's skin. It's because uh, he likes snakes and, and he's oh. taught himself to shed periodically. <laughs> so they, so Gibson, you know how like, uh, you know how like Paul Reed Smith has like his wood library. Yeah. Like, I think I think Gibson has like a, a library of Slash's skin that, they, that he's been shedding, and they basically have made papyrus yeah. out of it. And That's yeah, just sorry. gross. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I mean to be fair, to be fair, that is the that is the custom edition, limited to five hundred copies, with all the little trinkets with it, and hand signed hand signed by Slash with a mm-hmm. certificate. So, mm-hmm. all right, fair enough. You know, if you're a rich dentist, then then go and buy the thousand uh, pound mm. book and enjoy reading it, but. But but flip an egg. You want a pair of white gloves and and some tongs to turn each page with, wouldn't you? And yeah, you want to keep that brandy away from it. <laughs> sure. So I'll just go for the deluxe edition, okay, which I'm... is uh, presented in a slip case. So no clamshell box here. But but you, you get. <laughs> Isn't that a Nirvana song? Clam shaped box. <laughs> Touch it. Yeah, I know. Clam oh, yeah, shit yeah. box. <laughs> This is just descending into madness. It really is. I'm, I'm, I'm too jovial today. Uh, right, the, the deluxe edition is in a slip shell case with a poster, four art prints, as you get with the full fat version, and a certificate of authenticity. Uh, so there you go. But that is limited to a thousand copies. Okay. Uh, and and it's and it's yours for 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 two hundred and fifty dollars. There you go. Thanks, Gibson. Thanks. That's much more um, yeah. reasonable, Thanks. I think. Yeah. Don't you just love yeah. how Gibson makes everything Thanks. just completely yeah. inaccessible for the average yeah. person? Anyway. Yeah, yeah. you can't um, buy a cheap version of it. You can't buy the hard yeah, version of it no. and just have, have the book. So those, like, are your two, those are your two options. That's brilliant. Hey, Gibson executives, you know how we make all these guitars yeah. no one can afford? How about we do the same yeah. with some books? Yeah, how, how low could we do? take this? What, how low could we do? Socks? Socks. Yeah. Gib- buy yeah. these Gibson socks, hand-woven yeah. by, you yeah. know, um, the, the Gibson executives themselves made from yeah. the her of founding Slash's Slash. top hat. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> just, you know, keep your feet warm for six minutes. <laughs> Yeah, authentic slash hair. Yeah, certificate of authenticity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> certificate yeah. of authenticity. You know those little photos that Gibson put now. They call the book the, like the birth photo that they put at the last stage of assembly. Now, do you know they do this no. now? No. Yeah, on the Gibson production line, they call it like the um, like the birth certificate, right? So as it goes to the final final stage, just before it's you know mm-hmm. packed in its case and sent off to to your guitar store, they take a picture of it on the bench. Yeah. Uh, as the final thing and that that little photograph gets put in in as part of your case candy i don't know why you'd need it but it basically shows you there was there was your guitar at the gibson factory on the last bench of production where it's been signed off so it's like your quality control thing but it's like a little polaroid photograph yeah. well, so, time? yeah anyway you'll get one of those of them like picking the hair That's out fantastic. of slash's top hat can you but, imagine you know, you're in the hospital. You, you, the, the midwife's just delivered your, your child, right? Yeah. But before yeah. she hands it to you, she takes a photo of it and then gives you the yeah. photo as well. You'd be yeah, like, lovely. what, the, yeah. what, what are you what doing? Why? Yeah, why are you giving me a photo of the actual thing that I've just... <laughs> Somebody People love these photos now. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. Do, you know what just, they, do you know what Gibson needs? Gibson needs somebody in their staff that can say no to the yeah. idiotic ideas that are clearly coming out. They'll right sell now. all these books, mate. They'll, They'll sell, sell all of them. them. Yeah. They'll sell, sell all of them. And I'd have loved to have sat there on Boxing Day and mm. flicked through a copy of the Slash book. And, and the good thing know. about those books as well is if you run out of toilet paper. Wow. There you, there you go. go. There you go. Um, so, yeah. It. So I'm adding it to the list, but but I'm, I'm, I'll be disappointed if anyone buys it for me because 250 yeah. pounds or a thousand pounds for a hardback book um yeah it ain't it ain't cool anyway i've descended into madness and yeah, um and, and gonna, we need to bring this podcast to a close yeah, soon, so so. I'm, just, I'm just gonna i'm gonna blast i'm gonna blast, so through, blast them. Few things. Go, right go, Here, the, here's go. things that i think you should ask for now and these are yeah. some some good, uh, simple things so one one thing that's changed things for me this year is having a decent set of headphones for practicing yes. right i nice. spent some good money earlier in the year on these these are sennheiser um hd pro 2 
80s. Cost me about 85 quid, and they're just comfortable. I can wear them for hours. Any, they're great for, um, you know, for for the recording work that we do on the podcast. Great for practicing. Oh, it's just so much. It's it's so worth having a decent pair of headphones. The next Not, thing, I totally is, agree. Good shout, mate. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, go and treat yourself to a decent pair of headphones if you can. I mean, it's just it's brilliant. Uh, the second thing um, is uh, um, get yourself a decent guitar-based toolkit, something mm-hmm. with the specific tools you need for setting up your guitar. Yes. Or put, or put together a kit of the things. There's loads out there that are decent enough, like Ernie Balder, a musician's toolkit with all the various bits and pieces you need. Music Nomad do loads of fantastic tools. Yes, they do make, a good set. Make this Christmas and this year the year that you decide to treat your instruments to decent tools for maintenance so that you can keep on top of, um, you know, looking after your guitar. And the last thing I wanted to mention was, um, this is, I reckon this is probably stocking filler number one for all guitarists, but poly clip tuner from TC Electronic. Just yeah. keep one of those in your gig bag. Decent tuner. Yeah. You have a, yeah. at a jam night and the, you plug it into a, an amp that and there's no tuner. You just got a polyclip tuner there just to quickly go bring through across all does the strings. Does the polyclip the one do all the strings? Does it? There, there is a non-poly version ah. of it, but the polyclip obviously it's poly yeah. because it's, it's poly. poly. Yeah. So um, so yeah, so get the polyclip tuner. Nice. There you go. Great recommendations, mate. I've got one of the poly tune uh, mini pedals on yes. my board, which does that, and, and it properly works. That feature yeah, great, is not a gimmick. It? it totally works. Yeah. Um, I use these um, quite inexpensive snark clip-on tuners. Um, oh, you've got one as well. There you go. You got a, you got a black one. I got a red one. Um, I really like these. These yeah. these are really accurate, really good, and I like the fact it's got a vibration and mic function in it, which I think a lot of clip-on tuners have. But yeah, it, it really does work. Um, yeah, I would totally agree with all of those suggestions. Mate, a couple of other things that I thought of was nice stocking fillers. You know those little rubber mic clip-on um, things that go onto microphones where you can slot your picks oh, into? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love that. I yeah. use that every gig, and it's yeah. so bloody handy rather than having all your picks in your pocket. And That's true. if you ever do drop a pick, I tell you what, um, it doesn't happen that often with me, but it, when it has mm. happened, just being able to quickly like reach to the mic stand in front and pull a pick up pick off of it rather than rummaging around sure. in my pocket for another one yeah. um, is, is great. Um, yeah, and you can do that rock and roll thing of picking picks off and throwing it at the crowd and just yeah, like man. at the end of the gig like, hey, there yeah, you go. And then, yeah. But then you've got the embarrassment of going around and asking for them back because you yeah. don't want to keep wasting yeah. your own or, or cleaning up at the end of the night and the landlord goes, can you pick up all your stuff off the floor? And you're like, oh, no one, no one wanted no one my, picks. Up my picks. No, no, no one picked up my picks. No, no one picked up my picks. And then the other thing, um, I've got a great little amp recommendation. So you know you said you like the sound of uh, the when I sent you that video of the the PRS SE. Well, even yes. though I left the store kind of not really that enamoured by the PRS SE, it's okay. It's, it didn't blow me away. What did blow me away was the amp I tried it through, yeah. which was the Black Star uh, Silverline uh, range, and I mm. tried it through their twenty watt um, fully digital um, Silverline standard. It's like three hundred dollars. They, they had one on offer for like two hundred and. 60 in on Black Friday and it's got a Celestian 10 inch speaker in it but it's got what I really liked was it's got this <clears throat> it's a modeling amp but what it does is it models different valve um preamps um ah, and, the, and the response of them so that's okay, the yeah. that's the modeling element right so yeah. it, you've got like a rotary knob that goes through EL34s 6v6 EL84s KT66s nice nice uh, um valve there, 6L6s mm-hmm. KT88, and you literally use this rotary knob to change the um, the valve voicing, and it really works. So you have everything from like a Marshall That's so to cool, yeah. uh, a Fender amp, and and I found it really convincing. And I, you know, I would definitely invest in one of these as a as a nice gigable jam practice amp so mm-hmm. a bit more mm-hmm. a bit more than your like spark amp or your katana that you could actually take out and and it's got enough power to do it but a really nice range of tones that sounds fantastic i really yeah. want to try them out i did i did think that when you sent me that video i was like 
yeah, you know, uh, maybe the maybe you're not enjoying the guitar that much. It's a shame, blah 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 blah. Yeah, but yeah. the guitar tone you've got is yeah. killer, and I, I thought yeah, I assumed you were playing through something like a blues junior, or no. maybe because yeah. I thought maybe he'll try and find something that's similar to his amp at home. So maybe it's yeah. like a deluxe, deluxe or something like yeah. that. You know, yeah. um, and it's, I basically I had it so set good. up as a blues junior, but yeah. modelled through this 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 amp, and it, it worked so good. It sounded um, fat and it. It sounded like you know, like a proper tube amp. Yeah, for two hundred and fifty quid, three hundred bucks. Oh, it's, 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 it's a great amp, Celestine speaker. Yeah. yeah, I'd go and check them out. Um, oh, one last thing as well um, before I go. So uh, one thing uh, that was going to be on my list this year mm-hmm. was the um, the court, uh, the the Xenox Z forty four that we spoke about, right? The one that that one the one that got away. Um, so if anyone could find one, it would be Santa Claus because they're discontinued and it was the one that got away at the, at the guitar sh- show. Um, mm-hmm. or if you're like oh. me, <laughs> you got it and you do your research. Man, I am not over the moon for you. That is, so, <laughs> is that the one? Is that the one you had in the, in the, in the, that is the exact one. So I need to give a shout out. So I did, after we spoke at the last podcast episode, I did what I said I would do literally immediately. Yeah. I contacted the guitar show, said there was this guitar. I don't know the exhibitor. I don't really know the model of the guitar. I think it was this. Within five to 10 minutes, Gail uh, mm. at, the, at the London Guitar Show um, had come back to me and said, well, I, can't, I haven't got an exhibitor plan I can send you, but tell me the make of the guitar. Yeah. She said, I'll see if I can help you. So then I told her that. Within another few minutes, she'd come back to me and went, I think it's this guy. Uh, I hope he doesn't mind me giving him a name check, but I think it's Neil Cable from this, uh, I think it's Big Deal Music in Wolverhampton. Yeah. I've contacted him for you. Uh, that's where his stand was. And he said he's happy to be contacted by you. So she hooked, she hooked me up within like half an hour. Uh, so thank you, Gail. And Neil was an absolute legend. Yeah. Um, he didn't remember the guitar at first. So he sent me a few pictures of some black court guitars that he had. Uh, and they weren't the ones. So he went down to his lockup, rummaged through it came back and went is it this one and I went that is the one so it is mint condition he did it for me at the show price um which is brilliant of him mint condition new old stock it even had all the plastic still on the on the back it's literally brand new I've set it up I've given it a fret polish it's been it's had all the eight steps done to it yeah uh it's a thing of beauty mate it's got just I'm so happy for you mate honestly that's so good we will talk about this another day uh because we've got to go but I just wanted to I just wanted to thank um Neil Cable for hooking me up with that um and in true Christmas spirit uh, I mean mate it's a blinding guitar we'll talk about it on the next episode I'll give you a little run through it is it is beautiful but uh, in, in the true spirit of Christmas, I have decided, even though I was very much looking forward to taking this out and gigging it, gigging it this weekend, I'm not going to. It's going to go to my eldest son as his Christmas present. Um, oh, so a beautiful he, story. Yeah, he's um, he's. I hadn't realised how much he'd grown, and I saw him playing the other day on his um, half size uh, strap. Yeah, and uh, he's got too big for it, so he's ready to go up to the next guitar size. So that's going to be his for Christmas, and he's going to play it a lot. I know. Amazing. So yeah. Oh, well, on that so, yeah. note, mate. <laughs> There we go. On the spirit of Christmas. Mate, great to speak to you. Absolutely great to speak to you too. And uh, to all our listeners as well, very Merry Christmas because after this episode, the next one will be just after Christmas. So um, really have a fantastic, wonderful Christmas with your families and friends and hope uh, hope to see you on the next episode. Merry Christmas, mate. Absolutely. Merry Christmas, buddy. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening and once again have a very Merry Christmas. If you like what you hear then remember there are 67 other episodes going back pretty much two years that you can check out where we talk about things like how to set up your guitars, uh, desert island guitar rigs, music theory and even a pub quiz. Go and enjoy them. Anyway, best wishes. See you next time on the Guitar Smarts Podcast.